All right, we're gonna be talking about glycolysis today. We're gonna break this process down so it's really easy to understand all the way from eating a donut to actually running and using energy. We're gonna talk about pyruvate and lactate and how this all fits into the big process of bioenergetics. So let's dive into it. All right, so we just ate a donut and we need to make energy out of that. So when we eat the donut, we're gonna digest the donut through the stomach and then through the lining of the small intestines and that little bit of donut when we go to the, the molecular level, we call that glucose, a glucose molecule. If it's in the bloodstream, we just call that blood sugar or blood glucose. And that's where we're gonna start the process of glycolysis. Now, from blood glucose, we can go to a couple different places. You can just stay in the blood, but there's kind of a limited amount of that. You could also go to short-term storage, which would be in the muscle or the liver as glycogen, or to long-term storage as fat. But when we're talking about glycolysis, we're using that blood sugar from carbohydrates, and then we're going through the process of glycolysis. All right, so we're gonna kind of distinguish between aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis, although those terms are a little bit misleading. So glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm of the cell, so it doesn't technically require oxygen, but the environment of the cell basically determines the end product of this process. So if the cell is in an anaerobic state, meaning like you're sprinting, then we're gonna generally go through an anaerobic glycolysis all the way through to a lactate molecule at the end. So if that cell though is just in like a walking or a jogging or a sleeping state, that cell is just gonna be taxed to the extent that it would go through that oxidative system and uh, it wouldn't need to produce lactate. So let's go ahead and break down the anaerobic first and then we'll come back to the aerobic. So anaerobic glycolysis, Again, this is a process where you're at a higher activity level. You're expending significant amounts of energy, and we're gonna break all the way down to lactate. So, to start off, guys, we have that little bit of donut, that glucose molecule. So, remember that glucose is just this molecule. So this, we could think of it as just like a microscopic piece of donut. It looks like this under microscope. It's six carbons. It kind of actually makes a circle shape, but we're just gonna draw it like this. It's a six carbon molecule. That's a glucose molecule. The process of glycolysis, guys, the name tells you everything you need to know, glycolysis. So big picture here, the process of glycolysis is cutting or lysing a glucose molecule in half. So when we have that glucose molecule and we cut it in half, instead of a six carbon, we're left with two three carbon molecules. And we call those three carbon molecules pyruvate. Now, if we're in an anaerobic state and we want to kind of get the most out of this without having oxygen, we're going to go and take that pyruvate and we're actually going to go all the way to lactate with it. So the benefit of that is that we're going to turn an NADH into an NAD plus uh, and then lactate is our end product. This can accumulate in the blood and that's where uh, we think about things like the lactate threshold where uh, you know, at any time we have a certain level of lactate in the blood, if it starts to accumulate from a lot of the anaerobic glycolysis process happening, then we get to a, a threshold basically where you can't clear lactate. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that clear into lactate. That is actually called the Cori cycle. So as you can see here guys, lactate can enter the liver, so this is the liver, you can actually have the byproduct of that anaerobic glycolysis go through the liver and then turn back into glucose. So generally speaking, anytime that something is turning back into glucose, we call that gluconeogenesis. So that just means making new glucose. So the creation of new glucose. Again, just sound that word out, gluconeogenesis. That's not specific just to lactate. Amino acids can do that. Uh, fats actually go through acetyl-CoA and then turn back into glucose. So that process of gluconeogenesis kind of puts that lactate all the way back to the start, and then if you're in an aerobic state, you could take it through aerobic glycolysis. Again, this aerobic glycolysis would be the cellular condition that you have oxygen. So if that cell has enough oxygen, we're gonna go through two pyruvate the exact same. So we're still gonna have that six carbon glucose molecule, we're still gonna cut it directly in half into two pyruvate molecules, but again, if we have oxygen, the next step of that is we're gonna go down to the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle requires oxygen, and that's why we kind of distinguish this aerobic glycolysis from anaerobic. So from that pyruvate, the next step is actually to take this oxygen molecule and then have one of those three carbons from the pyruvate jump onto an oxygen, and then it becomes CO2. That CO2 molecule just gets you know, basically pushed out of the cell 
back into the bloodstream, and then it goes out and you exhale it through your lungs. That way we're left with just acetyl-CoA, this two carbon molecule, and that's what's gonna go into the Krebs cycle. So whether you're in aerobic or anaerobic glycolysis, we're still getting those two net ATP. So we're getting energy from this process, guys. Glycolysis actually costs two ATP and then produces four ATP, but we get a net of two ATP. That's what you actually get out of it. Again, that's one glucose molecule, you get two ATP. If you think about it per pyruvate, you would actually get kind of one ATP per pyruvate, but given one glucose molecule, you'd get two uh, ATP. So glycolysis is an enzymatic process, meaning that enzymes push it to go faster. The rate limiting enzyme, meaning the most important enzyme for keeping glycolysis going fast is PFK, which is the abbreviation for phosphofructokinase. All right guys, so if you don't have oxygen, then anaerobic glycolysis just ends in lactate and that's it. But in that oxidative situation, you're gonna continue cellular respiration with the Krebs cycle being step two and then oxidative phosphorylation being step three. If you guys wanna learn more about that, go ahead and check out this next video. And if you got anything from this video, go ahead and smash the like button. It helps other people find this video instead of all the other boring bioenergetics videos that are out there. Uh, and go ahead and hit subscribe, guys, because I have a lot of other videos coming out that are gonna be helpful for you.